Hi everyone, so this video is going to be about YouTube and a couple of questions that you guys have asked me and I mentioned this about doing a video like this a while ago and loads of you said that you wanted me to do it. I'm talking louder than usual in this video because it's raining really really heavily outside and it's kind of tapping on the windows and you can kind of hear it so hopefully the noise isn't too bad and you can still kind of hear what I'm saying. But I get loads and loads of emails and questions and inbox messages and things from people asking me about starting out on YouTube and I just want to kind of put a little disclaimer out there first and say that you know I'm not Tanya Burr, I'm not incredibly successful um, on YouTube and I'm not you know incredibly famous on YouTube either there are tons and tons of other people out there that are doing a far better job than me and probably have got much better advice than me but you asked so I'm delivering and I've written down a couple of pointers that I wanted to kind of get through in this video and talk to you about and the first thing is about getting started. I have loads and loads of messages from people asking how to get started on YouTube, how did you get started, weren't you intimidated and all that kind of thing. And the first thing I think that you should do is if you feel like it's something you want to do, just record a video. You don't need to have an amazing camera for this, just use like, you know, you can just use your webcam just to start out, just to kind of see how you're going. There's no point in, you know, going and buying some really expensive camera and then realising that it's not for you and you've just kind of wasted that money. Don't go ahead and do that, just film with what you've got first to get a feel for it. Film a video, whatever topic you like, you know, this isn't necessarily just beauty advice. Go ahead and film the video that you want to film and then you can upload it onto YouTube but select it to be private so only you can see it. And that way you can kind of get a feel as to how you portray yourself on camera, how comfortable you are on camera, you can kind of watch it back and see what you'd like to change and all that kind of thing. In terms of editing software, if you want to start editing videos, there's loads and loads of different tools out there. A lot of people are very um, big fans of iMovie. Um, I use the Windows Movie Maker, I think. I'm not 100% sure what it's called. I'll put a little annotation here somewhere about what I use, but that's a very, very easy one to use. And you just can kind of get a feel for it and see what you want to do. Then if you decide that you want to do this, do a little bit of research. So research the topics you're going to talk about, research um, tags and that kind of thing. Make sure you've got the correct tags in your videos because they're what enables you to kind of be more visible on YouTube and that kind of thing. And just put it out there and see what happens. You know, if you don't try, you're never going to know. You could end up, you know, absolutely loving it and it being amazing. Or it could end up being something that, you know, you've decided you don't really want to do. So that's in terms of getting started video ideas for the first time. I'm going to talk kind of beauty because obviously that's kind of my territory. But if you want to do something like um, a what's in my bag video for example, a very good starter video is because you've kind of got your prop, you've got the thing that you can talk about so you can just be like this is what's in my bag and it kind of gives you more um, incentive to talk about something rather than just kind of general chit chat. Then another thing that I think is really important is to really just kind of do it as you're talking to your friend, so don't feel like you've got to kind of really put on a camera voice and like do a little bit of an act because that's not really what it's about. Just do what you feel comfortable with. And something like I said, what's in your bag or something like that where you've got a prop, a really good um, video to do. Or maybe a tag video because you've got the questions already there and you don't have to kind of think too much about talking. They're good ideas to get started with. Next is to get yourself out and about and noticed on YouTube. I get tons and tons of comments on this and how did you get your channel to be big? How did you get noticed? How um, how does that work? And to be honest, there's no secret to that. And I think what a lot of people now don't get is that YouTube is such a massive, massive community now. And a lot of the really big YouTube YouTubers got in there a couple of years ago, like, you know, three, four years ago, when the beauty community on YouTube wasn't as big. There were only a couple and it wasn't as successful. So they got in there at a good time and obviously because they were first it kind of stemmed from there. Now there's so, so many fantastic channels that you know don't get enough credit and so many great, great content creators that it's impossible for everybody to get the kind of amazing opportunities that they probably deserve. So you've got to really bear that in mind and know that you know, you, you're not gonna get a thousand subscribers like on the first day. It takes time and it takes effort. And to just keep putting as much content out there, I think is absolutely key. The more content you create, the more relevant you are at the time. So as much content as you can, you know, if you just make one video and then don't make another for like six months, you're not really gonna get noticed. So pick a topic that you feel um, you're really passionate about or try and pick a topic that there isn't much about. 
and that's what I like to try and do. I'll kind of have an idea and then I'll research to see what's out there on the internet about that topic. And I like to kind of see where there's voids and then I'll create a video to try and fill that void. So for example, I did research about a Brazilian bikini wax and I realized that there wasn't enough info out there. So I felt like my video would kind of create would fill that void so if you kind of think about it in that way it'll help you kind of determine the subjects of the videos that you want to make then um, in terms of socializing make sure you have a twitter account twitter is massively popular with youtubers and it's a great way to kind of socialize and to get your face noticed out there with other bloggers and other youtubers and all that kind of thing a word of advice about kind of getting yourself out there it's absolutely fine to kind of email bigger youtubers and just ask them for kind of a little bit of advice or to just ask them you know to kind of subscribe and help you spread the word i try and you know spread the word for as many new YouTubers as I can. But um, I think there's ways of doing it. I think it's kind of off-putting when somebody, for example, puts them in the comments below your video and kind of slightly spams the videos. Um, I had someone that kind of did that really often on every single video. They were just using my video as a platform to promote themselves. And I think that's a little bit wrong. I think it's probably nicer if you just inbox that person and just ask them. Um, and also I think it's quite important to word it in a certain way so I know a lot of people kind of word it like it's a life and death situation and will sort of say you know like no one ever notices me and it'll be really hard for me and I really would love for you to subscribe and all that kind of thing and I know that it does feel like that but I think trying to kind of word it in a slightly more light-hearted way will get you further so reach out to people socialize network and you will kind of meet some really fantastic people over YouTube and Twitter and that kind of thing anyway I know I have then another thing that um, I wanted to touch on I've just kind of written little pointers here so there's a bit of structure to this video is what to expect so as I said earlier first of all you can't expect to make one video and have a million subscribers overnight you can't even even expect to make like a million great videos and have tons and tons of subscribers and be as successful if you're doing it because you want to be super successful I don't know if that's going to work out because there's just too much competition out there and it's very very much a game of luck and a game of who you know in my opinion so know that know that you know you can't expect things to just happen like that and you're going to have to put a lot of work in and sometimes even if you put a lot of work in it's not going to get you to the point where you think you should be that is something that you just have to kind of come to terms with and accept. Then in terms of um, kind of what to expect in terms of management and that kind of thing, um, the bigger you are, the kind of more PR sample, PR people will contact you and offer you samples and that kind of thing. Don't agree to review something you know that you're not going to like because that's just a bit unfair. Um, and also don't just review everything positively because you're scared to say a bad word. I definitely, definitely think it's obvious when people are doing that and it's much more effective to give an honest review because that's what people are looking for. You wouldn't want to watch a review of someone telling you they like something just because they were sent it. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Don't feel guilty about getting sent products because um, I know a lot of people will complain about that. But the way I see it is PR companies need bloggers, bloggers need PR companies because in order for me to talk to you about new products and share new things with you all the time, I have to have these new things to share with you. And if, for example, you know, I don't go out and buy every single new product that's out there and a lot of the times they're products that you know I think I won't like so I would never buy it but then you get to try it and you actually really like it and then you can tell people actually I really got on well with this so it is something that you definitely definitely want to bear in mind because it is very um, satisfying to kind of be able to share this knowledge and share new finds with people then in terms of hate um, what to expect a lot of people ask me this First of all, I think if you're in school, um, it's probably a better idea not to start a YouTube channel because if somebody finds out, you could be mocked for it. And I just think it kind of makes life harder than it has to be um, if you're at school. So I definitely think that it's not really worth it from that aspect. But if you're very strong-minded and you decide that you still want to, then by all means, go ahead. What happens with the hate on YouTube is a very, very strange thing. And it's something that you have to be prepared for. It's something that I wasn't prepared for. Something that I'm still a little bit baffled by why people would be that mean. But um, it is a very kind of horrible side of YouTube. To be honest, touch wood, I don't get that much hate. I don't get too many horrible comments. And I'm very, very lucky to have lovely, lovely people that watch my videos. But 
um, you will get nasty comments at some point. Some of them will be just completely ridiculous comments, like I had one the other day that told me that I had, a, a, what did they say, that I had a, a pig shaped snout. Just comments like that that you just think clearly you have severe issues. But another thing to remember is that, you know, these are people that are very unhappy with their own lives and they're just kind of negative and maybe jealous and just like to kind of spread that negativity around. Not something that you kind of really want to participate in. How to deal with hater comments is another thing. I know a lot of people think you ignore and block. I did used to do that until there was this one person who I would block and then for about a month, every time I'd block her, this was like every couple of days, I'd block her, she'd just open a new account and continue to be abusive and then you'd block that account and then she'd open another one. Eventually after about a month she got bored of it. But that was just completely baffling to me and totally, totally ridiculous because I couldn't understand why are you going to so much trouble like who even has the spare time to be constantly opening new youtube accounts every couple of days it's bizarre so um i now feel like you should stand up for yourself this is just my opinion a lot of people will disagree a lot of people say you just ignore don't reply and that kind of thing but I disagree with that. I think you should reply and I think it's important to stand up for yourself. And it's important to give these people a lot of the time a taste of their own medicine. You don't have to be nasty about it. Try and be professional about it. But explain to them and make them realise that, you know, it's not okay to talk like this and then you can block them if you want to. But I definitely think standing up for yourself is important. A lot of people will say, like, oh, you're just giving them what they want. They just crave the attention. And if that's the case, then maybe. But I can't... I don't think it's good to just not stick up for yourself or something like that. I think that it's something that's important. Um, but it, by all means, the positive response outweigh the negative by a million to one. So it's not something that you should worry about too much. Just be aware that it's out there. It is very upsetting when you get one, especially if it's something that you're very self-conscious about. So for example, if you're very self-conscious about your skin and someone says that you've got horrible skin, it will really upset you. Um, it's really only the things that I'm self-conscious about that people comment on that upset me. If someone sort of says like, you know, you've got a pig-shaped nose, that doesn't upset me because I just think, I haven't. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes you'll get really unfounded claims as well and just try to ignore those as best you can. Then last but not least is finding your YouTube personality. This doesn't mean what it sounds because I feel like a lot, a lot of YouTubers these days adopt a kind of false personality and they'll kind of act in a certain way that um, they think is kind of more appealing to the masses or more appealing to their um, audience and that kind of thing and there's nothing wrong with that per se if you want to do that but I definitely always think that you should be true to yourself and you shouldn't kind of pretend to dumb yourself down to act a certain way because you think that's what people want to see definitely definitely be yourself and I think a lot of the reason why for example my channel isn't as successful as other people's is because I don't kind of do it in a very um, cutesy kind of younger appealing way it's kind of more for grown women and grown women don't tend to really watch that many YouTube videos I have got loads of younger viewers but I feel like the kind of really young viewers probably wouldn't like my videos as much because they're not kind of very cute and colourful and very um, appealing to that kind of audience. So that is something to bear in mind and um, I definitely think that you should just kind of find who you want to be on YouTube and stick to that and that kind of be your personality and don't try and kind of act like how everyone else is acting because you think that that's what's popular because at the end of the day it's obvious when you're kind of pretending to be something that you're not and that's kind of the conclusion of this video but those are all the points I wanted to touch on on this video if you've got any questions or anything like that pop them in the comments below I will do my best to get back to you um, people that's another thing sometimes kind of will get upset if you don't get back to them I absolutely hands on my heart try to get back to as many people as I possibly can it's not always that easy um, but I really really do try and I think I kind of do a better job than a lot of people are getting back to people because I really do try and do it I'll kind of 
come back in the evening and sit there on the computer and try and reply to as many things as I possibly can so I do really try and do it but um, yeah if you've got any questions or anything like that definitely let me know and if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to give it a big big thumbs up and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!